Hello everyone. I wanted to do a quick video because I've got some exciting things to play with today. Um, back in 2021, I took the opportunity and actually ran a trap line uh, seriously for the first time in a long time. I did that for four or five days and had some pretty good success uh, trapping raccoons, uh, beaver, and coyotes. I learned a lot and I was able to experiment with a number of different traps, uh, different applications of bait and lure, as well as different ways of actually rigging these traps. And I just absolutely fell in love with the, the pursuit and the practice. Um, a lot of that fueled by like the historical sort of anachronism of trapping, uh, going back to the mountain man and the fur trade, and this the, another excuse to get out of nature and be out in the woods, um, to be able to learn a lot too. Um, I was really inspired by the book, um, Give Your Heart to the Hawks, uh, which is a phenomenal mountain man book if you're interested in that. But what I really thought was neat is I had an opportunity to visit a, a fur takers convention, the Oklahoma Fur Harvesters Alliance convention in uh, Okima, Oklahoma. And I got out there and just ate up all the lectures and absorbed a lot of knowledge and had an opportunity to visit with a lot of vendors um, and met some folks from Oki Trap and Cable Supply, where I bought some bait that I wound up catching a kite with, uh, some Locklear's Federales bait and cat collector lure, and then uh, met the guy at Blakely's Trapping Supplies and bought some uh, Bridger Double Long Springs for trapping beaver for him. So I had a great time and had, had mixed success uh, over the season. I found that I actually did catch coyotes um, in Minnesota brand 550 double coil spring traps. Um, I had those uh, in dirt hole sets, uh, running two traps to a set with a uh, Federales bait in the hole, and some cat collecting lure, and then some bobcat urine on the back end, uh, actually. And that was awesome. That was just fantastic. And I'll see if I can post a picture of that. Um, one of the things that I found in trapping in Oklahoma specifically is that our regulations are fairly restrictive. Um, so for the use of, say, body grip traps, um, it's not legal at all unless you had a specific license as a nuisance a control operative. So if someone who's actually being paid for this and does additional testing beyond your recreational trapper. And uh, restrictions on the number of springs that you could have in a coil spring trap. Uh, so you're restricted to uh, two coil springs, whereas in many other states, four coil springs is the norm. So what four coil springs affords you is greater holding power and in some cases, uh, quicker trap speed as well. So that appears to be changing, uh, hopefully in 2022, 2023. Uh, there are some proposed rules that the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation put out um, for comments that would allow the use of body grip traps in water. So that's gonna be your conibear style traps um, and it's gonna remove the restriction on number of coils for coil springs. So I thought, given that opportunity, uh, let's do a little experimentation. So last year I trapped um, nearly exclusively with double coil spring offset jaw traps, which is required in Oklahoma. Uh, for coyotes, I did uh, Duke number threes and Minnesota brand 550s. Uh, for beaver, I did some Sleepy Creek number fours, uh, Duke number threes. And then for like raccoons, I did a mix of uh, Bridger number twos and one and three quarters. I also did some dog-proof traps for raccoons as well. So I had a big learning curve because I, I really kind of went out and tried a little bit of everything. What I found is that I really liked Minnesota brand traps. Um, they were just heavier built than anything else out there, uh, much more robust, and they did not require modification up front. Uh, so with some of the Dukes, I had some issues with pan leveling and had to bend uh, the dog in a little bit in some cases. Um, and then it's like, okay, is this trap actually going to go off now? Because I've had to bend this so far. Um, but I got that lined out, but I never had to touch the EMBs, the Minnesota brand traps. So Minnesota does their trap size designation in a hundred series, roughly representing uh, the, the outer diameter of the pin, uh, outer di diameter of the jaws. So they do 450, 550, 650, and 750, representing four and a half inches to seven and a half inches. So I was running 550s last year, it was five and a half inches. In doing research, what I found is a lot of other trappers in states that allow four coil traps prefer the MB750, uh, which is a honking trap. 
So I thought, if Oklahoma's going to change the laws, I'm going to buy one of these and experiment with it. And this is what I have right here. Uh, this is a Minnesota brand 750. Uh, outside diameter of this trap will be 7 and 7 eighths inches. So in Oklahoma, it's got to be less than 8 inches for land sets uh, under the proposed change. Uh, and it would allow, I think, 8 and a half inches for water sets. Right now, it's just 8 inches across the board. Uh, and I thought, well, let's try a, a little bit different way to set these up. So last year when I was running the MD550s, I was doing those with rebar stakes. And then I had a double staking system where I had a 18 to 24 inch piece of rebar that was cross staked. Uh, and we had very hard soil for the most part last year. Uh, rain was, was low, ground was really tough. And I just had a bear of a time pulling stakes. I feel like I spent more time pulling stakes than I actually did trapping. Um, so I wanted to try a drag rig, and I wanted to try a bigger trap this year. So Minnesota Brand offers several different versions of the 750. They have the regular 750, they have a beaver version, uh, they have a, a wolf version. This is the Alaskan Wolf. Um, it's got a 3 8 inch offset between the jaws. Uh, it's, oh gosh, four and a half pounds or so. Uh, it's four coil springs and the jaws are laminated. So some of those features, um, the offset between the jaws means that this is gonna lock up higher, which means there's a less chance of an animal pulling out of it. The laminations on the jaws, these little welded strips, mean that that's actually gonna have a, a larger surface area on the animal. So that's gonna be conducive to blood flow. Uh, it's not gonna harm the animal and it's actually going to make sure that their legs don't go numb, that their pad or their paw is not gonna go numb, caught in the strap. A uh, super robust trap, whereas most traps will actually have a dog that latches under the pan. These actually have a bar system and tabs where the bar interlocks with the tabs on the trap jaws. That's pretty unique. This is a wolf trap. It's designed for Alaskan wolves. Um, we don't have gray wolves or timber wolves in Oklahoma, but we do have brush wolves or prairie wolves, which is a coyote, right? So these are actually pretty popular for coyotes. Uh, this is the largest trap that I purchased, but I'm gonna go to go today. And I wanted to show you essentially the rigging video for this. So I've got a lot of components here. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this trap on basically a, a 14 foot piece of chain uh, with several swivels, and that's gonna be attached to this saber tooth anchor. So this is a heavy duty welded anchor. You can see these tines are facing opposite directions. It weighs pretty close to three pounds. What that's gonna allow me to do is to trap in areas where I can't pound a stake or it's really difficult to. Um, and it allows me to basically be more efficient on the trap line. Uh, instead of spending the time pulling stakes, pounding stakes, I can either wrap this, pre-wrap this on a chain around a tree, um, which I saw in the Hoosier Trapping Supply folks videos. They did a great job or I can just trust it as a drag and it's, it's very heavy duty. It's gonna hang up. So as the coyote pulls this chain, this is gonna catch on timber, or even just in the ground, a clump of grass, and it's gonna hold them in place. Uh, for this rig, I've been buying supplies uh, from Fur Harvester's Trading Post out of Michigan, and then Blakely's Trapping Supplies out of Missouri. But uh, over the past year, I've bought supplies from a lot of people, um, from Oki Trapping Cable, um, from Funk in Iowa, uh, from Southern Snares, uh, literally all over the place. And my experience has been very good with all of those. So for rigging this, uh, this has just got a short piece of number five chain attached from the factory with a very large wolf swivel. Uh, number five chain is basically the heaviest chain that you would ever use for a coyote, um, but it's, it's satisfactory for wolves. So I ordered I know, 20 feet of that um, in this box. And you see I've got this Rubbermaid lid because this stuff is absolutely coated in grease. Uh, try not to get it everywhere. So I'm going to take two seven foot links of this chain. I'm going to attach the first link to this wolf swivel, this crunch proof swivel. And then on the end of that, I'm actually going to attach a spring, an inline spring. So you can buy trapping springs designed specifically uh, for coyotes or wolves. And they can be very, very expensive for what they are because at the end of the day, they're just free. So what I've got here is actually a porch swing spring 
This is a 300 pound uh, rated porch swing spring. And I'm actually going to use this as an inline spring for this trap. So after the first seven foot section of chain, I put this on there and then we're going to run another seven foot section of chain uh, to the actual drag. In order to accomplish that, I'm going to use some more of the crunch proof swivels from Minnesota Brown. Um, swivels are really important for trapping uh, because they allow an animal to rotate on the chain. That means that they're not going to unnecessarily stress themselves or hurt themselves. So these just have uh, J-hooks that you slip in uh, into the actual swivel and then you're going to secure that hook in your connection on the chain. So I've just got a pair of fencing pliers for that and then I've got a pair of lock cutters, chain cutters that I'm actually going to cut this chain with. So I'm going to grab a measuring tape really quickly, uh, cut this chain to length, and I'll show you what the assembly looks like. Well, we have officially dealt with the world's greasiest piece of chain. Uh, I don't know how much Dawn dish soap I used, but it was a lot. So that's going to be an issue uh, with scent control. Obviously, with this trap, we're going to boil it um, in log wood trap dye, actually. Uh, we'll put this in a turkey fryer full of water with this trap dye, which is essentially like walnut hulls. Uh, and it'll knock the grease off of it. Um, one thing about trapping, which is completely different than firearms, is that rust is not necessarily your enemy. When a trap rusts, um, this dye adheres much better. And the same way with the chains, I want all this preservative off. And if they rust a little bit, that's okay, because it's gonna be less of a, a scent issue, uh, which is a primary detection method uh, for this. So I'll boil this trap, log with trap dye, and allow that to dry. And uh, then we'll actually heat it up again in the same turkey fryer, it's been cleaned out, and we'll wax it. Waxing it um, prevents corrosion, but it also increases uh, sort of the lock time of the trap, which is great. To begin with, I'm going to take my short piece of chain, uh, which I've degreased as best as I could. Uh, I'm going to take this loop, and then I'm going to take this big honking uh, wolf swivel, which is really just a very large crunch proof swivel. I'm going to run this link through here. I'm going to take my handy dandy fencing pliers. And I'm going to try to get them around this gigantic wolf swivel. Like so. So we have a pretty sturdy connection there. Uh, I'm going to crunch that in a little bit more. If I were actually trapping wolves, and I'm probably going to do this anyways, once these are bent in, they should be tack welded together. That way there's no question uh, that these are ever going to come loose. So I'm going to give this one one more squeeze. Alright, we're good there. So we've got our shorter piece of chain connected to the trap. It's got a swivel right here next to the trap which is great, allows the animal to move freely. Then we're gonna attach this uh, to our 300 pound porch swing spring. So I'm gonna take another one of these uh, crunch proof swivels, rig it up real quick. One end of the swivel is gonna be attached directly to the chain. Same way with my fencing pliers. Got this hook. That hook is going to fit into the groove of our pliers. Got a good connection there. The other end is going to attach directly to our 300 pound inline spring. This is a captive spring, which is nice. And on the other end of the spring, uh, you could do an S-hook. Um, at this point, I've got more swivels than I have S-hooks, so I'm actually going to add another crunch proof swivel on this end as well. So just running uh, the, the J-hooks here uh, through the end of the swivel. All 
I'm doing the tapered end of the swivel, attaching the connection to the spring. And then on the square end of the swivel, this is going back to our long length chain. So now I have a total of three swivels and a spring. The spring will compress. It allows the coyote to pull against that without hurting itself and gives it some relief. And it also means it's not going to pop a stake out if I decided to stake this into the ground. Uh, so springs are a good deal. On the end, I'm actually going to attach my drag. I have some options here about how I do this. I could do this to another swivel. I think that I'm actually going to do this in this case with split ring belt. So I'm going to slide over here and grab one of my split rings. Or at least figure out what I did. There we go. So this is literally just a gigantic split ring. Uh, they're very handy in trapping. You use split rings and quick links for connections. And that's what exactly I'm going to do here. Just rotating it like you would do a key ring, but in mega size. And the same thing with my saber tooth anchor. If you're really concerned about the sturdiness of this, you could do an S hook. Uh, for kayak trapping, there's no way this is going anywhere. So, completely satisfied with that. Let me get this cleaned up and I'll give you an overall picture of what this rig looks like and then we'll discuss it a little further. So, this is the completed rig and you see I've actually set this strap. Uh, you can see that the bar is actually resting, the crossbar is resting on two tabs on the jaws. I will be completely honest with you, this is one hellacious trap. Uh, this is the stiffest springs I've ever tried to set on the trap, and I used some big beaver traps last year. So make sure you know what you're doing. Um, I find it easiest to set it with your feet. And as always, avoid putting your hands uh, anywhere above the jaws. Always work from below. Uh, this trap does have a night latch. What a night latch does is it allows you to move the pan down and essentially place it on a hair trigger. But perhaps more importantly, it makes the pan level, uh, which is really good with your presentation. So we have the body of the trap, uh, the wolf swivel attached to about five feet of chain, and that five foot of chain attached to two more crunch roof swivels attached to in the middle here, obviously this 300 pound inline spring, the remainder of your chain and your drag, and then a split ring connection to the saber tooth drag. So again, uh, sufficient for Alaskan wolves, yes. I would recommend welding up all of those uh, attachment points, including the swivels. Uh, but this is going to be, a, I'm hoping, a legal and effective coyote rig. So the upside to this, again, with a larger pan, uh, laminated jaws and four springs, that's going to mean that I've got a, a bigger catch area. I'm probably only going to be using one trap to a set instead of two. Uh, the trap is going to fire faster. Uh, but in addition to that, with the laminated jaws, it's actually going to be more comfortable for the animal once he's in the trap. Uh, the use of the swivels is extremely humane. It allows the animal to move freely, as well as the spring linkage, linkage uh, which allows him to pull without endangering himself. Uh, so this is an effective and humane trap that I'm very much looking forward to. So here's hoping that the uh, Oklahoma legislature goes ahead and uh, approves all the proposed changes. And if not, uh, this will just be a very cool conversation piece. So that's all I have for the day. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.